Um, so namaste and uh, welcome everyone to our uh, conversation with the uh, Bharatanatyam dancer choreographer Navya Natarajan. Um, uh, you may have noticed that on Alap we have been giving a shout out to Navya's new work, which is, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Navya, um, Virodha Bhasa, The Paradox. Um, so Navya's uh, work is being premiered by uh, the... Uh, Mandala Arts and Culture in collaboration with the Dance Center. Um, so uh, we have been sort of sharing uh, some excerpts from Navya's beautiful work. I had the opportunity of watching this on Saturday and it was truly beautiful, but uh, I would like to really start with some fantastic words that I read on Paradox, which is words by someone called Tommy Cotton. And it says, she was an old soul with a young heart. She was grounded, but sewed free. She'd felt weak, but she was so strong. She'd lived through pain, but smiled more than not. She was a paradox. Uh, Navya, I think this uh, would be the perfect context, um, you know, uh, for us to sort of discuss the idea of paradox. And I'm not going to get, get in too much in, uh, into the dance itself, because there's so many experts who know that better than I do. But I'm really going to ask you firstly, what has it been like to dance paradox? Has that process really been uh, cathartic in some way? Um, you know, people often talk about, you know, something that uh, consumes you. And in your case, it was a personal tragedy. And just investigating, deep diving into that and actually being able to express it through the medium that you know best, which is dance. What has that process really been like? And that's really how I think we should kickstart this interview. Great. Thanks a lot. I think the quote that you read is so true. You know, these are things that ring a bell and it resonates with a lot of us. Certain things that he has said definitely resonates and that's how we see the world around. So dancing the paradox has been a beautiful journey for me and you rightly said it has been a very cathartic experience for me. And I think every time, now this is the first draft, if I can say so, right? But I'm sure every time I go through this performance, it's not going to be a performance for me per se. It's an experience for me on stage. It's an experience that I wish to share with my audience. Uh, because the, in fact, I must say that, uh, you know, how it all came about, if I can say so at this point, is I was having a random conversation with my aunt and I've mentioned her name, K. Geetanjali, in the production. And um, she's uh, one of those very sensitive, uh, I can say writers. She also writes for a magazine called Life Positive. So we do have all these discussions on philosophy, spirituality, life, reality, all of it. And I was having one such conversation, a very random conversation. And she said, Navya, she just stopped me and she said, Navya, you are living a paradox. Accept it. Enjoy the beauty of it because life is a paradox. And I, it just left me at that. I mean, I didn't think mal over it much. And then I was having this, I was just taking a walk on my terrace with my mom and I was sharing this conversation with her. And then bang, the thought came as an, oh, now this is something that feels very deep inside. It's not coming from a very, uh, what do you say, superficial level for me. It's something that probably has been there in me for a long time, something that's been brewing in me, but I was not pointed in that direction. And I suppose these conversations had to come about to kind of help me go in and say, okay, I think you probably need to work on this. And at this point, it was not just a production, though I knew that I had to work on something. I didn't know what I was going to work on. And right at the apt time, I got this kind of a nudge, you know, from the universe, if I can say so. And that's when I thought, okay, this resonates with me. This is something very deep and I need to explore it again, though not just to put it out there, but for myself. It's a very personal journey for me. And hence, uh, I think this is going to remain with me for the longest time. I want to perform this more, engage with it more and marry with it more because I feel there are so many things that are going to help me in my personal journey. Yeah. In fact, one of the questions that I was just thinking about as I was getting ready for this interview was really as human beings, um, Navya, like, you know, we're, our, we are some of our experiences, right? So as as life throws more challenges and more experiences our way, um, obviously the work in itself is going to evolve, right? So I wanted to understand from you as a dancer who creates work, um, when when is there a shelf life for a production? Or do some productions have, um, you know, you, you sort of finish it, you perform it, 
for a while and then you pack it and put it up away. But uh, would you think that works like these that really are, um, uh, you know, born out of our own personal experiences, do they have a shelf life which, is, which will sort of in a certain way journey with us along the course of our life? Yes, I do believe there are certain productions that do journey with you. And uh, this is going to be one. I had done a couple of them in the past, but I realized that, uh, see, the interesting thing is whether you're doing a production or a traditional margam, right? There are times that you bring out episodes from your own life or you're inspired by your personal experiences or by observing the world around. So at some point, I guess when you've gone past that stage in your life, that particular production may seem to mean something else totally different. That's happened to me in the past, whether it's a traditional margam or not. Uh, I have seen that, okay, I may have delineated a line a particular way at that, at that stage in my life. But let's say five years down the lane, I would see, oh, this actually now something else is making more sense, but it's quite apt. It's quite relevant to the lines that have been spoken about. And the same thing happens with productions. It stays there with you for a long time and certain personal experiences like if, I mean, I've actually bared my heart out in the production. I lost my father a couple of years back and uh, I don't think that's going to leave me that soon. You know, it's because I had a great relationship with him, with my parents, I have a great relationship. So this production is, is going to be with me. Maybe I will find answers to it. Maybe I will find closures to it. However, there are times when you just want to experience it. You just want to live through it and come out of it and something else beautiful will come out. So I believe that certain things will stay with you. And as an artist, the beauty is you can keep revisiting it and beautiful gems keep coming out. You know, that is the journey of discovery and exploration that uh, will, should be there in an artist and will remain there. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, Navi, I just want to take a quick moment to ask you a little bit about uh, your, uh, uh, you know, when you sort of start toying with an idea and want to sort of create a production out of it. I'm sure that goes through a journey of its own, right? I just want to understand, I'm just always curious by uh, the artistic process of choreography and of engaging with the work. And I'd like to know, like, what is your process? And can you tell us specifically with uh, you know, speaking of this work, how long did you sort of engage with it? What was your rigor like? Did you lock yourself up in a room or was it constantly, you know, running in your head? Just tell us a little bit about it. I think it's a mixture of a lot of things that happened. So it happened early this year. So I ideally take a lot of time to work on a production because it needs that kind of investment. But here there was a deadline to meet. So, uh, and I, like I said, Paradox is, it's, it actually breaks all assumptions, this particular topic, you know, and uh, it is something that you know, the more you mull over it, the more you mull over it, the less uh, things fall into place because it's very complicated, I feel, and uh, it kind of challenges the logic. So where do you stop the logic and where does the essence come in? So these are things that happen. And uh, so well, for me, it started off with discussion. So like I said, I spoke with my aunt and I said, okay, let me take this up. Let me see where I am with it. So I did sit with it for a long time. For, I would just sit by myself or there were times when I actually lived a paradox where you're thinking about it and then you're letting go. Yeah, so things were happening. So I felt, oh, so this is actually happening to me. And then, uh, yes, I, I didn't lock myself up, but I just kept doing my bit, just kept reading up, uh, reading as much as possible, talking to my aunt. And then I came up with a storyboard. I, and I kind of picked on, like I sat with myself and said, what makes sense to me? Where is it coming from? And of course, that there's a lot of introspection that I did, a lot of, in, in a lot of silence that it went on. And then I picked up on paradoxes that resonated with me. It, it comes from a personal space. And I had a whole storyboard set up. And then I felt, you know, most often, uh, for us, for an artist, her production is her baby. So you get so seduced by your own production, you really don't see the gaps, right? I wouldn't say mistakes because you can't make mistakes in production. It's just your interpretation and your perspective, right? So they're not mistakes. So I said, okay, now I have this whole thing there. What am I missing? And there was nobody to tell me that. So I, I was very hesitant and tentative, but I did approach, uh, you know, I've mentioned him, Sri Sumantra Gosal. And because I feel, because I had this beautiful opportunity to interact with him in the past. 
So I said, okay, let me just find out from him if all of that I have said and written and the way I'm thinking of it, does it make any sense? Am I on the right track? And he was gracious enough, very gracious enough to accept it and say, okay, I can help you and guide you in this whole process. And uh, that's when I started seeing those gaps. You know, he said, this doesn't make sense. This makes sense. These gaps are there. And the questions that he puts out, because you need these questions, you need to keep questioning yourself as to, okay, why am I doing it in the first place? Why is this paradox so important? And why are you doing it the way you've, you chose to do it? So that kind of interaction and dialogue happened quite a bit. And yes, um, I also had this opportunity I, uh, to kind of interact with Preeti Atreya. I've seen a lot of her work. And since she's got a foundation in Bharatanatyam and she's kind of moved on to the contemporary way of looking at stuff, um, I felt she would help me in widening that horizon, giving, giving me a nudge, saying that, you know, uh, why don't you, because we've been blessed with this very beautiful art form, which has all the, what do you say, the verticals and the lat uh, horizontals. So why don't you kind of explore the length and breadth of it? Yeah, and how uh, the ideas that you have in your mind can be more visceral and somatic. So that's how I went about my whole thing. And I think both of them uh, really helped me and guided me and giving me that clarity in uh, how does one present something like this? What is that is needed uh, to kind of uh, break away from the way you think, you know, and to see another perspective and to be open about it. And uh, so Mantra was so very kind of him to, I mean, he's a person who's so busy and to give me that quality time to guide me, you know, that talks a lot about him and uh, that's how I went about it. And then of course, I had to sit with my, uh, my music composer, Suki. Yeah. yeah, music is just gorgeous. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we went back. Know, Navi, is, is this the first time that you're engaging with an idea that's an, in an, an abstraction, so to speak? No, I have done this in the past. I've done something called the earthen pot. Uh, that was again a bit abstract. It was basically the premise was that, uh, you know, like how you said, uh, what goes into the mortal remains, it's just not the mortal remains, but a sum total of all experiences. And every time we go through an experience, we can choose to run away or we can choose to confront it. And if you do confront it, then you are helping yourself, not anybody else. You're helping yourself, you're able to move on. And probably that's what is in the pot. So I've done abstraction in the past. Uh, yeah. But not like a full-fledged 70 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how has your relationship with the idea of paradox itself changed, Navya, now that you have sort of, you know, really um, marinated and soaked in that idea and actually articulated it um, uh, through dance? Um, what has happened to you, like in a certain way, like how has your relationship with paradox changed? Initially, I must say that I was struggling with the idea there was a struggle because uh, i didn't know how to address it in the first place how do i address this and through the journey i have actually befriended it and i feel at this point i'm actually enjoying living a paradox because my whole thing is you know when you start living a paradox you understand there's nothing right or wrong it's the path you choose to travel. And when you hold both together with you, you are able to free yourself. You know, and I'm able to see paradox in so many things. And I feel when my aunt said life is a paradox, it's beautiful, accept it. I understand where she's coming from. And I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm able to see paradoxes now and say, wow. So the universe is so beautiful. Wow, that's great, uh, Navya. I just want to, I just have two questions, Navya. One is, what is the duration of that? You could probably tell people a little bit about the duration and until when it's on so that... Uh, yes, it's actually on until November 24th, uh, Canadian time. That's the Vancouver time. And uh, it's it was, uh, yeah, that's on the 24th. So they have another 10 days to go, perhaps? Eight days. Eight uh, no, days. Yeah, nine days. Yeah, yeah, nine days to go, yes. So they can watch it on that, uh, uh, it's there, the link is there, the dance center. That's and right, it's on uh, Navya's bio as well as on our love story. Yeah, 
Um, now we are a little bit about the duration of the work, and also I want to. I'm a little curious about you talk. You use the word storyboard, mm -hmm. right? Which is often the word people in the world of cinema use. You know, mm -hmm. so I just want to ask you a little bit about that and then we'll wrap it because, you know, I know that attention span for people <laughs> on Instagram is dwindling. So I want to keep it tight. But just yeah. to tell us a little bit about the duration and the storyboarding. Yes, the duration is actually 70 minutes, seven zero, And uh, it has around four segments. The production has four segments in it. And each segment is a very different paradox. But at the end of the day, it's about enjoying it and freeing yourself at the same time you know holding on to it but freeing yourself so that's the uh, thing about paradox and uh, what was this sorry the second question the idea of the storyboard yeah, yeah. like how you sort of evolved that storyboard really yes because i believe uh, when you do even i think i also have the storyboard concept when it comes to a regular margam so basically have that kind of an approach to anything that i do yeah you know so Yes, so it's perhaps that. So every time I think, and I have a very, I mean, all artists, right? We all have this visual, we conjure up images. The moment you think of a topic, Absolutely. you know, I don't start writing. For me, these visuals start appearing. In your head, yeah. yeah? yeah. And so then these are the visuals that go into my, I like I have N number of drafts, N number of notes. So it goes into this big book that I have, and I have these random things that I write. So this is the storybook. Where, what do I want to start? And sometimes it will be bang at the center. The thought will be for the some segment that's at the center. So that goes in first. And sometimes this starting comes in much later, the beginning of the production. So yes, I've heard this in, uh, uh, and I do, the thing about Storyboard is also because I do see a lot of movies. You know, I'm a big movie buff uh, and I see a lot of them. And I also try to see, okay, where did the director start off from? What is, has been an approach? So I also go through that process. And I have a friend who was in the theater, so. Yeah, I mean, I had a feeling because the way this has been sort of segmented, right? It has a very, um, yeah, um, you know, especially these, um, let's say these new age films that are on Netflix, for example, have these segments, right? So I had, I felt that it had that sort of, a, uh, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the one last thing that I want to ask you, because I just can't resist this question, is this whole thing of, of by virtue of journeying with you in your journey of investigating and exploring and discovering and accepting uh, or freeing yourself or embracing paradox, um, this work also becomes a sort of a collective, um, you know, journey of uh, people also to um, to investigate that idea. That's what I felt because uh, it's such a powerful theme that it almost like kind of it's compelling and almost like kind of like leads you along to also introspect on your own own life. So I think it's also as much an individual uh, exploration of paradox of the notion of paradox as much as it is of a collective um, exploration of this um, idea. And I, I just want to congratulate you for um, uh, you know creating work that truly makes um, anyone and everyone think. And I and I truly felt that it was a work which. Um, uh, appeals so much even to someone who's not necessarily very familiar with the uh, the framework of dance itself because there is no literal text in that sense and it's uh, it's it emerges from the idea of a, of a personal experience and then it's sort of you know um, and it's um, and it's no wonder that you know you had collaborators like Shumantra Bhushal and Preeti Atreya whose work I'm a very big fan of so um, uh, you know um, thank you for uh, sharing all the behind the scenes and the process that went into creating this work. I do hope more people uh, watch it and really appreciate it. Anything I else that you'd like to add, Navya, about Paradox? No, I just like that note that you said, it's a collective experience because I think most often, uh, at, at least I hope, you know, that the work that I try to create can resonate more because I feel the production has helped me. And if people do like it and uh, it resonates with them, it probably will help them also do something else with it, you know, like create their own or like how it was cathartic for me, hopefully it will help somebody else. So that's always been the intention of my work. And I think a lot of artists do that as well. It all comes from their personal experience and that's all it is. It's, it's, a, it's a nice word that you use. It's a collective uh, understanding of this thing. So thank you so much. And I sincerely hope people watch it and like it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Navya, and um, all the best, and we'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.